Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, as you know, we have had an eventful several weeks here. There have been several incidents of mass shootings and gun violence, followed by many discussions about gun safety and, of course, politicians talking about gun control. In the meantime, we still await for the United States Supreme Court's opinion in New York Pistol and Rifle Association v. Bruin, which may significantly alter the landscape for all of these discussions. So today we're going to spend a few minutes talking about the pending tidal wave about to crash down on gun control. Okay, so we've talked about this issue before, and we're going to talk about it again because I want you all to understand how important this may be for what is clearly a huge war ahead of us as it relates to your Second Amendment rights and the rights of all lawful and responsible gun owners, not only in the state of Washington, but nationwide. There was an article, and it's the typical Washington Post uh, freak-out fashion, and the headline reads, Supreme Court could soon make it easier to carry guns in six states. Oh, my gosh. And the subtitle was, if the justices strike down New York's century-old restrictions on carrying concealed firearms, similar regulations in California, New Jersey, Maryland, Hawaii, and Massachusetts would be vulnerable. Oh, vulnerable to the exercise of somebody's Second Amendment rights. What is the issue that is sitting before the United States Supreme Court. The issue is, is the state of New York, like all of the other states that were mentioned here, are what's called May issue states. Does this affect us here in Washington state? No, it doesn't, because we are actually a shall issue state. But there are, there are several states, these ones are listed as May issue states, which means that when you go to apply for a concealed carry license, not only do you have to demonstrate that you are a lawful uh, person that is lawfully allowed to possess a firearm, but you also must demonstrate a special need or reason for why you need to carry a gun. The whole, I just want to exercise my constitutional right and protect myself and my family is not good enough in these states. And so what it basically turns into is a de facto uh, de not blanket denial of concealed carry licenses throughout the state. New York's even worse because I believe they actually require a license for you to have a firearm just inside your home. The issue before New York Pistol and Rifle Association from some people is a very narrow issue, which is, does the Second Amendment extend beyond the home? And I shouldn't call that a narrow issue. It certainly is a very broad issue. But I think that the implications of this case are far greater, and that's what I want to get you to understand. Yes, one of the issues to be decided will be, does the, sec the protections afforded us through the Second Amendment extend outside of our home? Why it wouldn't would make no sense to any of us. Let us all remember that the right of self-defense is a right which is not necessarily given to us by the Constitution. The Constitution guarantees that government cannot take it away from us. So yeah, the states listed in this article are sitting on pins and needles because with one swipe of the pen, their concealed carry laws could be absolutely overturned just like that. Now, here's the bigger issue though, and this is what we all need to pay attention to. There has been, for whatever reason, a debate amongst federal courts as to what level of scrutiny do we apply to gun control regulations. Now, even though Justice Scalia in D.C. v. Heller made it crystal clear that when we are talking about the restrictions on how we use firearms, when we are talking about the restrictions on the types of firearms and how we are can defend ourselves, we use a strict scrutiny analysis. And a strict scrutiny analysis basically says, hey, does this infringe upon a right that we have generally accepted to be that right? And if it does so, that's the end of the inquiry. The law's unconstitutional. It's overturned. We're done talking about it, okay? And the United States Supreme Court, Justice Scalia in particular, has made that known that that should be the standard under which all these gun control legislations are analyzed. So that includes your magazine bans, your AR bans, many of the other crazy bans that you're seeing in some of the bluer states in the country. Now, what many of the federal circuit courts like to do is instead 
uh, interpret these gun control legislation through what's called inter intermediate analysis. Now, intermediate analysis allows the court to do this little balancing test, which is, well, we take a look at the individual rights at, at stake, but we also took a look at the public interest that we're trying to serve. And if the public interest, protecting lives, outweighs the individual right, then the gun control legislation is deemed constitutional. Now, you can imagine when you give somebody this kind of vague balancing test, how easy it is to put the thumb on the scale and make sure that all legislation is deemed constitutional. And in fact, in most of the federal circuit courts, that's exactly what is occurring. So the big issue, the biggest issue to come out of New York Pistol and Rifle Association v. Bruin is, is a once and for all final announcement to every circuit court in the United States of America that when we're talking about gun control legislation, when we're talking about regulations that remove the types of firearms and the manners and methods by which people can defend themselves, we're going to apply a strict scrutiny analysis. And if this court could make that clear announcement, that would put on notice to any state that has a magazine ban, an AR ban, or any state that's thinking about a magazine ban, or an AR ban, or anything of that nature, that those days are probably numbered. Listen, we're near the end of June, and at this point, this opinion probably should have been published already. I think the rest of the country is waiting on another opinion on pins and needles, but that opinion does not concern the subject matter on this channel. As soon as that opinion is out, we will post several videos breaking down what does it mean to you, the lawful and responsible gun owner, not only in Washington State, but nationwide. In the meantime, if you have any questions about your Second Amendment rights or anything else related to this issue, Remember, you can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember, part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.